Hello, listeners. You are listening to another episode of That's Entertainment. I am your pop culture maven, Jeff Malone. And with me, as always, live from Hampton, Maine, is my Aunt Beth Woods. Aunt Beth, it's almost springtime. How are you? I'm good. It was springtime here today. I was sitting on my magic deck. I bet it wasn't as warm as you guys, but it felt beautiful in the 50s and sunny. But it was I don't warm think enough for you not to wear socks. To not wear socks? Right. Yes. When I was sitting on the deck, I didn't have to have a jacket or socks. Ooh. But when I walked in the woods in the mush mud with the dogs, I had to have socks and boots because it's gross. <laughs> it's mm. like... Oh, I sink into the mud. So, but I don't think our nice weather is supposed to last this mm. week. I'm not sure about next, but did you have in the 60s? Yeah, we got up to 65 maybe wow. on, on Tuesday. And I think we're recording on Wednesday. So I think Thursday is supposed to be the warmest day this week. Oh, wow. And yeah, today we'll, was our... we'll know by the time this episode drops in your podcast feeds. Yeah, yeah, it feels good. <laughs> we'll mm. see. We'll see for here. You never know in Maine, and March can be very unpredictable. So, yeah. We well, just... well, we knew while the weather might go up and down, we do know that the sunset is later, and you know what that means, because this is the second year in a row that a certain something has happened on the first day of daylight savings. Um, I'm not sure. I'll give you a hint. It's why we're (laughs) podcasting right now. This is the second year that the Academy Awards. I don't know if it's the second year ever, but it is the second year in a row. Yeah. uh, Yeah. We lost an hour of sleep, but we were still expected to come out for Hollywood's biggest night. That's right. They lost it. Yeah. It gets earlier and earlier. That feels like that we do daylight saving, but it's nice because I look outside and I'm like, oh, it's still not dark out. Yeah. in December, it's dark here by almost four by four o'clock. So it feels good that seven to still see some light. Mm-hmm. But anyway, we should talk about what that that day of what happened then. Yeah, I think we should. Yes. Yeah, so and normally on that's entertainment, we pick a pop culture topic and discuss it according to the three F's, first, favorite, and forever. And th- that's that's the premise of this little podcast here. But uh Every March, well, sometimes it's been February, but for the last few years, it's been March. We uh, set aside an episode for our annual Academy Awards reaction. And yeah, so the 96th edition of the Oscars aired on March 10th. And um, and Beth and I both love the Oscars. So we're going to go ahead and talk about them, our reactions to the winners. And the losers, and the host, and the presenters. I just want to say something. In four years, when it's the 100th anniversary, wherever you and I are, we should get together (laughs) and do a podcast. Because I can't believe in four years it'll be the 100th. In four years, I'll be... Do you know what I'll be in four years? Will you be 40 then? I will be, yeah. You'll be turning 40. Oh, my God. Sheesh, I don't even want to think about that. But yeah, I, I know. I remember when the, he said the 96th and I was like, wow, that's a big one coming. So anyway, you got to talk about our reaction. Yeah, you said reactions to winners, uh, presenters, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, just the whole take on the show, what we thought about it. And, uh... Yeah, so uh, Oppenheimer was the big winner of the night. It won Best Picture and Director and a couple acting um, uh, categories, seven overall. Poor Things won four categories. Zone of Interest won two. Those were all the movies that won multiple awards. I think seven of the ten Oscar nominees won at least one category. Oh. They were, they were pretty well spread out this year. Uh, Oppenheimer definitely had the most. But uh, yeah, the, the 
it, it was um an interesting mix this year yeah i like when uh, they're spread out like that so did you make any predictions ahead of time not really but i have ideas of i you know certain ones just from watching some of the other shows the screen actors and the golden globes and stuff i had a few ideas of uh who was gonna win so um the only one i was i wasn't sure about actress Mm -hmm. um but yeah so i know you i didn't did you post your predictions i did i did put them on my blog um i think did i put them up there i think i put them up on saturday afternoon so just a day before did you do pretty well in what you predicted? Not exactly. No. <laughs> okay. So there were 23 categories. How many do you think I got right? Huh. Let me see. 18. I would consider that a good night of predictions. Yeah, I did I didn't do that well. <laughs> no, I don't know. The ones that are really hard like the um, I don't know the uh, the shorts, the live action short and sound and um, editing, yeah, documentary short and live action short, and I think those are always hard to. Well, I I have, would have no idea. So, well, I mean, I but thought I, I thought I was making reasonable predictions, but I only got thirteen right. Oh well, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, what happened was in like most of the categories i got wrong there were like two i was deciding between oh and i went with the wrong the one, one the other one. one. Oh, okay um but oh, it, right. it's, it was still well in, in a few of those cases it was actually the the nominee that i preferred that i would have voted for oh, that okay. i ended up winning even though i predicted the other even one so could, yeah what you thought it's like well okay i i, I um I can be predicted. I'm not gonna get all. I can be disappointed. I'm not getting all my predictions right, but I can enjoy the acceptance speech from the people who I thought were deserving. So yeah. Um. But yeah, let's okay. let's just get right into it. So, uh, what was your overall reaction to this year's well, Oscars? Well, I, I enjoyed the ceremony very much. Um, and I will expand about you know that later as we get into the uh, winners and favorite moments and stuff but felt like everything went really smoothly I thought Jimmy did a good job um it even ended early which was crazy I'm looking at the clock and I think it was like 10 o'clock and they said we only have four um categories left and I was like sheesh they're gonna really end early they kind of stretched it out but um I mean they started earlier than usual you and I were both happy that it started at seven o'clock eastern rather than yeah. eight o'clock this year and even so and i think to give them some buffer room but even so it was i think shorter than usual i know i'm not they didn't really do any special um skits or i don't know what you mm-hmm. want to call them any montages bits or anything. yeah so maybe that's why but um on the whole though i i enjoyed it and like i said when we get to favorite moments and things excuse me i'll talk about why i enjoyed it but mm-hmm. what how about you well you know i mean i i can't remember uh an oscars ceremony where i didn't get like that magical feeling again like oh it's oscar night you know whether i'm watching it at home by myself or at a friend's house or wherever i'm watching it i'm uh, like it you know, I thought I was going to be, I thought I was exhausted by award season. Mm -hmm. Uh, I thought there could be no surprises because we've seen all the same winners at the other award shows. Uh, But there's, there's always nice moments and there's just something special about the Oscars. And uh, I mean, I think that starting an hour earlier, that was, uh, that, to me was a a huge deal because i i didn't feel you know i wasn't i i don't have to fight to stay awake when it's getting to be like 11 or so because you know i'm just feeling that anticipation but i'm like 
I know if I, you know, stay up long, I'm going to be feeling it tomorrow. So I'm like, I'm like this, Hey, it's still actually still bright out. Daylight saving started (laughs) when they're starting. Uh, this, this just feels nice. It's, um, you know, so it was a, it wasn't, it had that same magic and it was also, I guess, less stressful because it was just, it was a sunny day too, after it had been mm-hmm. raining the day before. I, I don't know. I, I think it was sunny in L in Los Angeles too, but um, mm-hmm. I didn't look at the forecast there, but um, it looked like it was nice on the red carpet, but yeah, anyway, I mean, I was, um, overall I was like, you know what? This is nice. Jimmy Kimmel's like the regular host. He knows what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, even if he's not your favorite talk show host or favorite comedian in the world, he, he knows what he's doing now. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's not going to be a disaster. Uh, and I think it was uh, better than average. So, yeah, I thought it was good. But so uh, yeah, let's, let's elaborate dig- on that. <laughs> yeah, let's dig into. Um, Favorite moments. Let's do, you know, favorite everything that you, you've got. So favorite speeches, presenters, other moments, favorite winners. Uh, okay. What do you have to say about all that? I've got a lot of stuff to say. So. <laughs> Good. Um, let's see. Well, there were a few winners I was disappointed. Um, that So original screenplay, I wanted either the holdovers or Maestro to win because I thought that they weren't going to win much else and I didn't want anatomy of a fall to win I don't know I get sort of when it's a um, film from another country and it's nominated I'm not wild about that I don't know if that sounds (laughs) I feel like it's taking away from like these films that you know Maestro was nominated for a few things that was one of the few that didn't end up getting anything right that was yeah so i think there were three best picture nominees that didn't win anything and that was one of them that was one of them, the, yeah. the other two were past lives and killers of the flower moon yeah and i'm surprised that didn't win anything anyway so and then um i was aggravated <laughs> poor things kept winning uh i wanted maestro to win for makeup because that was amazing to see Leonard Bernstein. I don't know if you knew what he looked like in real life, but everybody that I talked talk to was like, oh my God, he, it was amazing to see that. That was, thought, um, yeah, that was one of the ones I predicted wrong because mm. it seems like lately makeup will go to someone where it's like a facial transformation like that. Like I think Darkest Hour won a few years ago with the, um, the Winston Churchill movie. Yes, yep. Um. Yeah, well, I, I actually yeah. preferred poor things in that category because I kind of like the, I like the the messier makeup, I guess. Oh, okay. The more, I like the more. I think I like the more open, artistic playground. I think rather than recreating this, rec- a, I know a natural it's... person, and I, I mean that's you know like that's that depends on what your particular preferences are. There, it's. I think two different types of makeup approaches. Yeah, I see what. Yeah, it's either <clears throat> they're they're kind of making him into somebody that's already a well-known person compared to just yeah. I guess yeah. I guess I don't know. I have funny thoughts about poor things, so that's why I didn't want them to win so many things. Have and you seen it? A, yeah, seen- yeah, I saw. Mm-hmm. And then um, I thought Barbie should have gotten costume design um four things also up. on there yeah that was and that was another that was... one where where i predicted i predicted what you preferred but i would have preferred poor things and mm-hmm. poor things one no so. and then i was actually rooting for lily gladstone for best actress even though i love emma stone and i thought she did a great performance but that movie kind of i have odd f- feelings about i know you're not the only one yeah um and so i was sort of hoping that lily won so um the one that i was the happiest about was when american fiction won for best adapted screenplay but 
So those were, if you want to, before we go on to the moment, those were my reactions to the winners. <clears throat> if you have, do you have anything to, more to add about that before we go on to like the favorite moments and presenters and stuff? Um, I guess I'll, I'll mention, I kind of shared some thoughts on what I was um i mean i was it was why it was definitely expected that oppenheimer was going to win best picture and that christopher nolan was going to win director and that happened and i was happy to see that that wasn't my favorite movie of the year it was among my favorites and it wasn't my favorite of the best picture nominees but i was happy to see christopher nolan finally win best director same 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 with me wasn't my favorite of the year but i also thought it was very deserving so and then the other winner that I was a little surprised by, but not shocked, was um, in Best Sound. I predicted Oppenheimer there, and it ended up going to the Zone of Interest, which which I would have voted for. Uh, have you seen that? No, that's the only one I think I haven't seen because it finally came on streaming, but it's nine twenty dollars, hmm. and I'm like, I am not paying twenty dollars for for myself to watch it so i hate when they they do that so you've seen it yeah i mean they, it, that's a movie that's very much built around its sound design okay see i don't understand some of those uh categories but um so you thought are you picked oppenheimer for that but that was ended up being the zone of interest right yeah okay yeah um, so um, should we get into speeches and presenters yeah, now? Yeah. And okay. other favorite moments? My favorite thing about the ceremony was, and it probably you too, I loved having the past winners come out for supporting actor and actress mm -hmm. and lead actor and actress to present the awards. I thought that that really added a lot to kind of highlight each actor and actress. Um, it was very moving, so... Is this the first time they did that or did they do that? I think it's the third. Oh, okay. I remember they did it um, for the, I want to say 15 years ago, because it was oh. actually the last time Robert Downey Jr. was nominated. I remember specifically when he was nominated for Tropic Thunder, Jamie Foxx <clears throat> was talking about him. Oh, and he's okay. like, he was like, you, how, what were you thinking when you, you took on this role? Um, and then I think they did it one other year besides that. But so I think, oh, okay. so I think this is the third time they've done that. Yeah. I think you, I feel like I've heard you say that you enjoyed it. And then you, you, pro, I'm betting that you agree with me on this one. My favorite presenter of the evening was John Mulaney. That, uh, well, you you can you won that bet yeah he his little bit about field of dreams was when i went to rewatch it it said one minute and 25 seconds or so i was like oh my god in that short of a time yeah just what he got across was so hilarious and then people are like let him be host next time because he he was just so funny. So that was my favorite. And then Kate McKinnon and American Ferrara, Ferrera were funny too. And she with the documentary about Jurassic Park, but mm -hmm. John Mulaney was still my favorite. And then I, um, the 50 year anniversary of the streaker uh, mm -hmm. was kind of interesting <laughs> with John Cena coming out. Uh, and I enjoyed Ryan Gosling singing I'm um, just Ken and it was fun to see some of the other Kens and then mm -hmm. Slash was playing which yeah. was hilarious mm -hmm. and then last my favorite joke by Jimmy Kimmel he said oh there's some controversy surrounding the adapted screenplay and they didn't know when to tell it that it was adapted <laughs> do you remember that? <laughs> uh -huh. oh, that was pretty hilarious did you, so, do you remember when you told Riley that she was adapted? Yeah that's what made me think of it <laughs> That was so funny. Um, so those were my, okay. And then I'll just do the last one. And my favorite speeches. Um, I didn't have that many. I enjoyed the, the guy from American Fiction. 
Cord um, Jefferson. What's his name? Cord Jefferson. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I enjoyed him. And um, which by the way was my favorite movie of this award season. Oh, I just <laughs> I came out of that. There's not that many movies. It ended when I was at the theater and I said, boy, that was a really good movie. And um, I told your parents to go see it. I've told so many people to go see it. So I enjoyed his speech, but none of the others, I mean, they were good, but none of the others um, stuck out to me. So, okay, so you go now. <laughs> Those were all my moments, presenters, speeches. Um, yeah, well, I'll, I had the exact same favorite presenters as you, so I'll, okay. I'll jump past those. I think my very favorite moment of the ceremony was the um, I'm Just Ken performance, and it reminded me of, I guess it was nine, I think it was nine years ago when Everything is Awesome from the Lego movie was nominated for Best Song. Oh, geez. Okay. And so Andy Samberg and his friends from the Lonely Island, they performed it and like they were getting in the aisles and um, getting everyone into it. Mm -hmm. And the. So I'm just Ken didn't win, even though it was like probably the most memorable performance of the original yeah. songs. The other song from Barbie won uh, Billie Eilish's song. Um, and it was like the same thing with everything is awesome that didn't win best song even though it was like the most enthusiastic it, performance the, uh -huh. the song that won was uh glory from selma oh wow oh yes i do remember that that was a good song though and but i remember thinking after everything is awesome one was like could this win could it actually be glory yeah, guess, um hmm. and, and i was thinking that this year i was like uh could i'm just ken beat yeah. what was i made for and it, it didn't happen but you know it was uh it was interesting to consider the possibility for yeah. a few it, minutes i figured the other one by billy eilish would win because that's one almost in every other um awards mm -hmm. ceremony so i figured that was gonna win yeah, and I also liked Cord Jefferson's speech. I really, I mean, it fit the message of his movie as well. He's like, I was, I, I'm not vindictive anymore. I did, I worked hard not to be vindictive. <laughs> and he, he made a plea to the movie studios, you know, to try risking on smaller budgeted movies or medium budgeted movies instead of only big budget action yeah. movies. Um, so it, it felt really earnest and hopeful, um, yeah. at which I thought American fiction came off as well. And the, the other speech that I really that found really affecting was, um, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, Mstislav Chernov, the, um, mm -hmm. the documentary director um, of uh, 20 Days of Mariupol. Oh, um, okay. He's Ukrainian, so he was like his main thing was like I would, I would gladly have not made this movie if it oh, means yes. that Russia never invaded Ukraine. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he kind of ended on a hopeful note as well, or at least as hopeful as he can be, considering what he was talking about. He's like he made a plea to everyone. He's like everyone in attendance, you're the most creative people in the world. Um, so I ask you to do what you can to help in this effort because cinema creates memories and memories creates history. So, yeah. uh, you know, I don't know if that'll make much of a difference in the war effort, but it is, <clears throat> it is the sort of message that I, I think you hope to hear. Um, from someone who's who's living through it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and as for as for other moments that were a little that weren't so heavy, um, did you see Christopher Nolan and Steven Spielberg hug uh, after Chris won? Right, as because I think Spielberg presented it. To yeah, him. I think so. I think um, yeah, and it was yeah. Uh, I thought he kind of it was a very 
tender hug i guess i guess they've known each other it it seemed like they did um mm -hmm. like they've they've become friends at, at some point and were you feeling deja vu after emma stone won and then they went to best picture right afterwards oh with the la la land yeah. <laughs> hoping they didn't announce the wrong one Let's well say. jimmy kimmel he did uh he did joke about it right away yeah what did he say he said uh can we make sure we tear that envelope up okay so that there's no confusion with best picture oh wow that's right and well and then and another similarity so so with um with the la la land moonlight mix up it was warren Beatty and uh faye dunaway they were there for the 50th anniversary of bonnie and clyde so this mm -hmm. time al pacino comes out for the 50th anniversary of godfather part two so it's another older actor celebrating the 50th anniversary of a classic movie and then he well he reads re the right winner but it seemed like he he messed up a bit or or at least it came across that way because he didn't read any of the nominees. He just went right yeah. to the winner. That came up on my phone about that. And it said he said that um, that's how it was supposed to be. They told him the since they had already shown scenes from all the movies that he didn't need to read them all. But I think it would have been good to at least hear them again. Yeah, I think I so too. I mean, if I, I only read the headline of that, but if that's true, then I guess, I guess he did what he was supposed to. So, mm -hmm. uh, but it just came off a little strange because I think yeah. everyone was expecting to yeah. hear the nominees again, again. It did seem a little confusing, but. <laughs> um, one other part of the ceremony we haven't mentioned. What did you think of David Allen Greer as the announcer? Well, I love David Allen Greer, <laughs> aside from that. So I was kind of surprised when they said he was going to be the announcer. But yeah, I thought he did a good job. He's just, he needs to, he's so funny. And I haven't seen him lately in a, a role to be able to showcase, showcase his You're, talent. I We're going to recommend some stuff at the end. So keep that in mind. Okay. Keep that in mind. The funniest thing I ever saw him in was the Bonnie Hunt show. Uh -huh. I think he was in, well, she had two shows around not too far apart. Not the not her talk show, but it was a it was a really funny show. And he was in one of those and he was hilarious. I think she's hilarious too. But anyway, you, you so you can talk about that later. So yeah, that's pretty much all I have. Uh about it um yeah so do you want to were there any movies or performances that you really loved this year that didn't get any nominations that that would have if you were an academy member huh i can't think of any i felt like for a while i didn't see it seemed like um there weren't a lot that came out and then all of a sudden everything came out. Oh, I did enjoy. Yeah. Like we didn't hear anything. The boys in the boat when all those came out and um, what's iron claw that I really liked. And then was anyone nominated from was Penelope Cruz nominated for Ferrari Ferrari or no. No. Yeah. So none of those yeah. got any kind of. Yeah. Record. I mean, all three of those, they came out right around christmas and i think they just came out too late to make an impact on the yeah. race i think if they had come out a month earlier maybe maybe they would have been in the mix yeah you didn't hear much about it and then who else um i was thinking of something else that i oh well no those were just the ones what movies that were nominated but people that were left out like i feel bad you know you get like all this attention but you don't hear anything about Leonardo DiCaprio's role or um Florence Pugh it's kind of like she was not really in the movie because you never heard anything about her but I can't you know if if you had mentioned some movies I might say oh that should have been nominated but I can't think of anything any offhand were there any that you thought well the one I mean my favorite movie of the year 
I never would have expected to be nominated for Oscars. Uh, and that was Megan. The, oh, okay. Uh, the yeah. killer robot movie. Oh my God. Uh, that was your favorite of the whole year. Yep. Yeah, okay. Very much so. Well, I, I kind of want to mention a few uh, songs that weren't nominated because I like there were a handful of songs that I really liked that um, I, I liked both Barbie songs, but um, speaking of the Iron Claw, I thought that had a really fantastic, just like a stadium rock anthem. It's called um, Live That Way Forever that plays over the closing credits. Oh, uh, I really liked that song a lot. You know who that's by? It's um, by um, Richard Reed Perry, who's um, a member of Arcade Fire. And oh. his wife, uh, Laurel Spangle Spanglemeyer, who also who goes by the name Little Scream. So I wasn't really familiar with them before that, but um, I really liked the song. So, mm -hmm. uh, and then let's. See. Oh, I liked um, Olivia Rodrigo had a song from the the Hunger Games, the Ballad of Songbirds and S of Snakes. I liked that one a lot. And Flora and Son had some uh oh, yeah. had a few good original songs That's i mean i don't true. think has a john carney song ever been nominated a john carney movie ever had a, a original I song know. nomination i don't know should have for sing street some mm -hmm. of those should have <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um, yeah that was a that, i really did enjoy that one too i forgot about that i don't well, know if, it, if i think it should have been nominated but the know. one the one i the one song i really liked from that was um high life the one that they play as a family together and the in the last scene oh, in yes. the bar yeah and all of them uh and eve eve houston i really liked her in that she would have been i would have nominated her for lead actress mm -hmm. uh but yeah i have i always post my list of like if i ran the academy awards by myself yes Here's who you would dominate would be so that you can go on um on jmoney.com to see that uh list if you like um <clears throat> in the meantime Aunt Beth, if you feel like making a list like that of your own you can um send it over and i can i can post it on the that's entertainment mm. um social media it's channels. funny i'd have to look at that uh online again because I forget so many of the movies that I've seen throughout the year. So when is it, when are they um, eligible from January, 2023 to December? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think it's in like the shorts and documentaries, there might be an international film. The rules might be different, but generally it's like they have to be released theatrically from January to December. Yeah. I'd have to re go through and see what is, I know you keep track of what you see, but I don't. So I'd have to do that to remember. Oh. And one more thing we wanted to mention, uh, you sh so the Super Bowl has had a tradition of always showing a new episode of a, a TV show that what the network that is showing the game wants to spotlight. ABC decided to do that this year. They hadn't really done that with the Oscars in years past, but this year they showed a new episode of Abbott Elementary. So we'll we'll talk about that quick, and I think we'll focus on the connection it had to the Oscars. Did you catch? Um, I think there was a commercial during the ceremony that was like, "Keep watching Abbott Elementary to see what nominated actor guest stars on the show." Yeah, it was really funny. I put you, it on did you I, guess correctly who it was going to be? No, I don't think so, because I don't think I had heard. Did you know who was going to be on? I didn't. I, I don't think they announced it ahead of time. Um, yeah, yeah, I think it was just like, and I think that commercial that I'm talking about aired rather pretty late in the Oscar ceremony, so I didn't really think to make a guess, but yeah once once they remember. realized once so this this person shows up in the first scene of of the abbott episode and was like oh of course because he he's got the philly connection yeah <laughs> it's it's uh 
uh, I don't. So Bradley Cooper, is, I don't think he's from Philly proper, but he's from I want to say Jenkintown, maybe. Oh, okay. okay. See, I didn't Let's know if see. I knew that, but yeah, it was so funny to okay. all of a sudden. It was so funny because they're doing a show and tell, and then the kid brings them in. I was like, yeah. "What? It's Bradley Cooper!" So that was a lot of fun to see him and and all the um, teachers' reactions to to seeing him. So that was great. But then I felt bad because they they didn't win anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, yeah, it was a great episode as usual. Although some have been better than others. This was a really good episode. Mm -hmm. There were maybe one or two so far that haven't been up to par, I thought. But this was this was really good. Would you like that. to see the ABC continue this tradition? Yeah. Well, then the reason they haven't done it before is probably because it started so late. Right. So they can, <laughs> yeah, they the, it, it, it like, aired right on time. Yeah, they couldn't show it at 1130. So mm -hmm. yeah, I would like that. That was a lot of fun. I like when the um, even when the Super Bowl does it because they this year they did a new show tracker, mm -hmm. which I've been watching because of Justin Hartley, who I like. So it's kind of fun to watch and decide if you know, if you think it's something you're going to continue to watch. But this uh, with this with Abbott Elementary, that's a show that's already been on for this is the third season so mm -hmm. yeah that was a good that's a good tradition i enjoyed that oh. so anyway i guess we should wrap up uh, with our yeah well what's gonna win best picture next year mm. well, what's been out already I'm trying to and think Do doom part two got some really great reviews and the first oh, one okay. was nominated for a bunch of stuff yeah, I remember I didn't see it. It's not my kind of movie. Your Uncle Martin really liked it. I think you, you I think you might like some of this one. Um, you've seen the sec this already. Yeah, and okay. I I think you can watch this one without seeing the first. Like there might be some stuff you, you don't pick up on, but it yeah. it stands on its own. And mm -hmm. I think um I think there's some stuff about it that you might enjoy. Um I don't know if you'd yeah. like everything, but uh, if you well, have a spare two and a half hours. Yeah. <laughs> Although, so stuff already coming out now probably won't be nominated. You know, it's usually the stuff that's... I was glad, though. You know, that was different, too. Now that you think about it, a lot of times both Barbie and Oppenheimer were in, is it July? Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, they were huge movies, but sometimes stuff that comes out in the summer is already isn't even nominated because it's not as close to the uh, end of the year. So, um, so stuff now, nobody's going to remember. <laughs> well, year. I mean, that's, that's what it seems like the, the plan is by this movie studios. Like we're going to release all of our awards contenders in the last two months of the year. Yeah. Like, release them throughout the year. Give us a variety of different stuff. Yeah. every month i wish they did i know because like i said before i said there wasn't much playing and then all of a sudden <laughs> there were like you know five choices yeah. of things that i could go to see and i don't have i don't have enough i can only do it during the weekend and um i didn't have time to to do all that so uh but I have, I do have a recommendation of, I don't know when this movie came out. I think it's this year. And it was very cute. Um, Perfect Days. Have you seen that? It's a Japanese. Yes. Yes, I did. Did uh, you enjoy that? I did. Yeah. It was, yeah. Uh, it, was... it was on Prime. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, there's not much to it, but it was I think was sweet. that, I think it was nominated for international feature film. You know, it might have been, yeah. So maybe it came out. Must well, I think it out. Came, it came out in Japan last year, but oh, it came okay. out in the U.S. I think in February. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, should I get to recommendations then, or were you done? Well, we this? were. Yeah, it was time for <laughs> it. But I'll. So you've already recommended, but I'll do our little intro. We're like, is there okay. anything you have to promote or anything you'd like to recommend that you can enjoy with your aunts and or nephews? 
So do you have anything um, else to promote or recommend? Yeah, besides Perfect Days, um, I watched one, sh- there's only been one show so far of Elsbeth, mm-hmm. and I didn't know that, I didn't watch The Good Wife, um, so I didn't realize she was a character on that, um, but she seems kind of quirky and fun, so I'm probably going to continue to watch that. Um, I'm glad to hear that- it works for someone who... who- is just coming into it cold. Wait, say that again. I didn't, I'm, I I'm glad to hear that it works for someone who's coming into it cold. And because I watched, oh. I watched the last few seasons of The Good Wife, and I watched all of The Good Fight, so I, I've so seen her familiar. before. Yeah, no, it, it's I like I said, I just watched it. Yeah, I thought I enjoyed it, and I didn't know until I read about it later that it was from that. So yeah. Um, this one, I, I immediately thought of my great nieces. So this set you could definitely watch with your aunts or nieces and nephews. It's Damsel on Netflix mm-hmm. with Millie Bobby Brown. And I just finished it last night. It was very cute. I know uh, Mia would or, yeah, Mia would love it. Um, and then the only other, oh, The Call of the Midwife starts uh sunday the 17th so i'm excited about that are they going to ireland in that episode since it takes place on since it's airing on saint patrick's day yeah i doubt it (laughs) uh is that where is that set is that set in america or is that set in england in england okay yeah it starts in 1950s london maybe i'm not sure i think it's london but now we're almost into the 70s because it's been, this is, I think, the 12th season. So uh, I love it. Ooh, excuse me. Um, so are those all your recommendations? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll promote as usual our Patreon if you'd like to support us uh, for a few bucks a month. Or, and I'll also mention I've got all my best of 2023 coverage on jmoney.com. So you can see my picks for the best movies of the year and best tv and music and podcasts if you haven't checked that out already and ken jong as usual you still have an open invitation to appear as a guest on this podcast whenever you like and there are two things i'd like to recommend i think i've already recommended this movie before but um are you there god it's me margaret was oh, that so i said megan was my favorite movie there this was my second favorite oh wow. and yeah. i didn't expect it to get any oscar nominations but i thought it could have i thought it could have gotten like a screenplay nomination there's some buzz for rachel mcadams to maybe get a, a supporting actress nomination but that's that's definitely one that the the whole family can watch together yeah, yeah. and the other one i want to mention which is just coming out this weekend is the American Society of Magical Negroes. Have you heard about this? Mm-mm. Well, do you know the magical Negro trope in movies? Mm-mm. It's kind. Of, it's like a stereotypical black character who's like their only purpose in the movie is to help the white main character become the best person they can be. <clears throat> okay. So this movie is like, what if that's real, and they have magic? And that's how they help people. Oh. And so Justice Smith is the main character. He's the new recruit into the society. And his mentor okay. is. Do you know what I'm going to say? <laughs> no. It's a call back to earlier. Oh, oh, what we were talking about earlier. I know. I Someone who you I... think is very funny. Not John Mulaney. Well, think about what this movie is about. Who could play a magical... Oh, uh, John Mulaney couldn't play that. Not Sterling K. Brown. No. Who's the, the, f- who's the funny black guy we were talking about? Oh, earlier? David Allen Greer. Yep. Oh, he's... I <laughs> forgot we yeah. were talking about... He's, he plays that? Yeah. Oh, wow. So is it, it's coming out this weekend? Well, Yeah, we'll March March 15th, I think. Say the name of it again. The American Society of Magical Negroes. Okay, that's a great name. Let me see. I think, yeah, I think it's actually, it's going to be a wide release. Yeah, so it's it's not starting limited. So it should be, it should Let's be see. playing at your nearest multiplex this week. Yeah, I don't know. We don't always get 
Who's the um anybody else famous in it? Uh there is um Drew Tarver, who anyone who watched the other two on HBO would know um, him. Uh Nicole Byer is in it. Oh yeah, no. Uh, those are probably the biggest names. Oh, okay. Oh, have to look for it. I'm glad you mentioned it because it, I might have seen the title but not known anything about it. So um, that looks, yeah, that sounds good. Okay. And then you can, uh, you can leave us a review and we'll, we can read it on air. If, you, if you'd like to be, have your own 15 minutes of podcast fame and you can follow us on we're still on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter if you'd like to keep up with us there. Um, I guess that is everything until until next time. Well, sounds good. It so was, to... yeah. Did we do right by Hollywood's Biggest Night? I think so. They yeah. had at one of my movie theaters, you could dress a formal attire required and they were going to show the Academy Awards. I was like, "Oh my god! If I had somebody to go with, I would have uh, been tempted." To, you could take one of your dogs and dress. Do you could dress um <laughs> could have been a Henry up exactly. Uh, no, I think we did him. We did a good job. So okay, I can say my uh, what is good night, everybody. And I'll say, keep your remotes handy and your eyes open. Okay.